I've had multiple requests for this review. Top Notch Gamer and Noob Master 69. My gamer tag is Noob Master 69. Took a break from their regular activities to ask the age old question, is there more to life than headsets and online shooters? So you don't have to wait until the end. The answer is yes. This long term review is for you. In August of 2018, I ordered this ThinkPad X1 Yoga third generation. And eight days later, this silver beauty arrived on my porch. Those were the supply chain glory days of 2018. Ah, innocence. Here's the invoice for 1500 United States dollars that shows my configuration in the manner I call shamelessly disorganized. Some of you understand this gibberish and the rest of us don't care. It's now April, 2022. I've had this laptop in continuous use for almost four years. I keep it on blocks to keep the heat down and hopefully increase the life of the electrical components. Also, I hate fan noise. In terms of ports and connectivity, HDMI, full size, USB-C. This is the mini ethernet. It requires a special adapter dongle to connect it to regular ethernet. Headset, jack, power button, and the pen garage. I'll get to that later. Don't forget the security lock. On the left side of the device, you have your second USB 3, and there are two USB-C, and yes, it's Thunderbolt, and one of these ports gets taken up to charge the device. So you really only have one USB-C port free if you're keeping this connected and powered on. You may have noticed both of my USB 3 ports are taken up, which means when I want to connect an external hard drive, I have to disconnect my audio interface, which drives my speakers. I could compensate for this by buying a external hard drive that uses USB-C. The other USB 3 is connected to that StarTech dock. The dock allows me to share the number pad, keyboard, mouse, and this large screen between the two computers. The onboard graphics of this X1 Yoga easily drives this large monitor. I can watch HD videos. However, when it comes to gaming, that's where this computer simply isn't designed for that. The trackpad works great. You have gesture controls, pinch and zoom, multi-finger control. You have the left and right buttons up here that can be used with the pointer tool. I don't use that. I'm just not a fan of it, but I never have any problem with selecting from the trackpad. After four years of use, it also looks good. For comparison, on this business laptop that I've been using for just over a year, you can see how it's really worn down, has that wear pattern, and I'm not sure, but it may be the black aesthetic that is leading to see more of the, the dust buildup as compared to the silver of the X1 Yoga. I don't know if that's a quality difference or simply a result of which color you get. The X1 Yoga can be purchased in silver or black, at least this version could. I chose the HDR display and I think it's gorgeous. When it's on, I can't see any of the dust that's built up on the screen because who wants to dust their laptop all the time? The version I selected also comes with this built-in switch that I really like. By choosing this one, that meant I couldn't use Windows Hello with this laptop. You can't unlock the computer using facial recognition, obviously when the camera is covered. In theory, the fingerprint scanner would be a quick way to unlock the device. However, I found it unreliable or slow enough that it was simply faster to type in the code. It's possible a firmware update has improved that functionality, but I gave up on it more than a couple years ago. While you can see some screen glare from this angle, I rarely notice it when I'm actually sitting in front of the laptop working on it in various lighting conditions, whether that's in a bright room, a dark room, or on an airplane or elsewhere. Also, if you like using the touchscreen, all those gestures are possible, pinch and zoom, multi-finger, selecting, it all works. The keyboard has a softer feel, but it's still nice. Here's an idea of how deep the action goes. As you might've noticed on the invoice, I chose the i5 processor with 16 gigs of RAM, and I'm quite glad I didn't go for the i7 processor that costs several hundred dollars more, and the performance on this has been great. Even after almost four years, I think this thing still runs quite fast. If you're looking for a performance review, there are other channels that probably would give you a more comprehensive view on performance metrics, statistics, benchmarks, and so on. For this example, as a long-term review, let me just launch a few common apps, something like Firefox or the Edge browser or Excel. That should level set on what you can expect for performance. Again, I've been using this full time. The hard drive is almost full. 
it operates quite quickly for me. Here's how fast I can launch a music file using Music B. Web surfing is quick on this device and I've edited all the videos on this channel. It'll be over 50 videos using DaVinci Resolve. This gives you an idea for how long it takes Resolve to start up. It is the longest program to launch on this computer. I suspect it has more to do with Resolve itself than it does with the computer. Now one thing that I wish I would have changed about my configuration is I wish I would have gone for a larger hard drive. This has the 500 gigabyte SSD, which certainly launches apps and turns the device on very quickly. But as you can see, especially in editing videos, I have to use an external hard drive because between my music, pictures and videos and other old documents, I'm simply running out of space on this device. So for me, in my use case, I would have gone for at least a one terabyte SSD. That would have added a bit of cost, but as it is, I'm annoyed by always having to manage this limited amount of space that's free on my laptop. This does become an issue when I'm trying to load videos in Resolve or edit or do those types of things that the file sizes can balloon very quickly. As promised, here's the pen in the garage. Slides out easily and it's always being charged within the device. That's nice because you'll really never lose this. I mean, you'd almost have to try. I never use the pen. I thought I would when I bought this. I imagine myself taking all sorts of notes. It writes perfectly fine. It works well. I believe it has pressure sensitivity, but I never use it. The built-in camera and microphone work great for video calls. I've never had a complaint from others on my calls with my video or audio. By now it should be obvious that I'm using this as a desktop replacement. It literally replaced a desktop tower PC that I'd had for eight to 10 years with a discrete graphics card. And all except for video game performance, the X1 Yoga has outperformed my old computer by a mile. Now it hasn't been all rainbows and butterflies. Don't buy this if you wanna play video games. This X1 Yoga is so eager to work for me that I often have to turn it off twice. And what you're seeing here is that the laptop, even though I hit shutdown, it seems to power back on. You can see all the lights coming on. All I did was hit the shutdown button in Windows. And for some reason, it reboots the device. This seems more common when working in this desktop setup. And then I have to come in once it loads to the lock screen and I can turn it off from here. And now the device will actually shut down. Okay, the backlighting has now gone away, which means the device has actually powered down. You can see the, oh, except it hasn't fully. There, it just went, restarted again. When it's on the dock, this thing will just restart multiple times. So then if I start disconnecting the wires that are plugging it in, Having your computer restart on you when you're trying to shut it down, that's annoying. What I'll say is when it's on battery, I don't seem to ever have that issue. Now I haven't wiped off the screen. Now that it's turned off, you can get a visual for what kind of dust is on the screen. That's how powerful the illumination of the screen is that I don't even see any of the dust when the screen is on. The battery itself is internal, so you can't swap out batteries on the device, but I haven't had any issues with the battery. I took a trip recently and I worked in Excel not on Wi-Fi, while listening to music from the device for over four hours straight, and I still had more than 50% of my battery left. I think this device could do non-graphic work all day on battery. You could definitely make it through a day of college classes. After almost four years, I have traveled with it, thrown it into computer bags, and you can see the state that it's in. maybe some minor scuffing, scratches. But I think the silver color really helps to hide a lot of that. This is part of the X1 or premium carbon family. I believe Lenovo puts their best technology, their most durable technologies into these devices. So if that's peace of mind for you, it seems to work generally for me. With that said, I think all the time spent on the charger on the dock has led to static buildup 
and that is one of the main issues I've had. The device stopped charging, so when this is plugged in, it's an orange light when it's charging, and it's white when it's done charging. What happened was it stopped taking a charge, and then effectively the device seemed to be bricked. I couldn't even turn it on. It ran out of battery very quickly. It had been sitting on the charger on my desk when this happened, and I went and called Lenovo support, and because I bought the X1, it qualified me for premium support for free. When I called in, I was told to input a paper clip into this hole in the back and that that has a static discharge button underneath it. And when I held it for 60 seconds, the entire device came back to life instantly as if by magic, the device seems to function perfectly. So only once in a, about four years has the device entered any sort of an unusable state. The device maybe doesn't start quite as fast as I would like, but I don't think it's really slowed down that much in the four years that I've had it. From that standpoint, I think it's plenty quick. And I can also give you a quick volume speaker test. Those are the speakers on either side. And yes, the keys recede into the deck when you fold it back. That's of course one of the benefits of this yoga format. And it will sit flat as so. Now, how often do I actually use this? Again, I thought I would use this type of a format along with a pen. Turns out, I don't ever do it. If you think you'll be sketching out with your pen, this device will definitely do it. There's only one other topic that I'll add. If you have concerns about China, remember this is made by Lenovo. It's 100% supporting China. China, China. From parts to labor to management, and probably all the way back to the CCP. That's the reality of the electronics industry. You can find other companies with less exposure to China. I'm not sure, especially in the mainstream laptop companies, that you can find one that isn't in some part made in China. Overall, I'm happy with this purchase. I'm glad I bought it. I probably wouldn't go for the yoga format again because the Carbon is a lighter device, so you'll save on weight. I don't actually use the yoga format, so I would not buy this again if I was remaking the decision. But if you need that yoga format, if you have a use for the tablet type of device, then this is an excellent compromise Instead of having to carry a laptop and a tablet, you can get those in one device. I do recommend it for that. I haven't had many issues. It works well. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks to my subscribers that have asked for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it answered your questions. Have a great day. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Like this video, share it with anyone that may need a quick review to understand more about the yoga format and how it holds up over time.